Pay with being a little absurd and pompous. That's because I kill it, then stick around just to haunt it. Waiting on my thank you, be grateful that I would even let you watch it. It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. We'll get a look at Joe Burrow. He's been sensational as he leads the league in touchdown passes. It's the Bengals and the Vikings, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. It's a brisk night in the Midwest, but we've got football at Paycor Stadium in the Queen City of Cincinnati, Ohio. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. again everyone I'm Brandon Gunn to my left Charles Davis and Charles you focus on this Bengal team entering play they come in off a loss last time out but they've been playing better than 500 ball the last couple months five wins in their last eight games meanwhile for our visitors the Vikings they're in a real groove of late winners of five of their last six games and it's the defense that's really the star of the show a terrific game last week they got a shutout on the road We are set to go. Evan McPherson to do the honors, and we are underway from Cincinnati. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they will be led out by a man in his sophomore campaign as the quarterback. I like this guy, and the reason I do, he tends to stay on an even keel. Doesn't let too much ruffle him. He will manage the game the way it needs to be managed, take what the defense gives him, and then he can strike at times. Had a touchdown pass. Yes, he had an interception last week, but he found a way for his team to win. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. The numbers on the ground for Williams a week ago. 12 carries, 51 yards. There were some signs of life from their ground game last week, but overall, just a so-so performance. Everyone knows they can make a slight improvement how they contribute to this aspect of the offense. Lyman can set their blocks and hold them a little bit longer, and he can be quicker to the hole and hit a lane. If they do that, they should get some better numbers produced this week. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Now Purdy. This one swung out to Williams. Calling a gain of three on the play, and it's second down. Now Williams running left, and they will only muster a yard here to the 38. You talk about this Bengals defense. Right now they're ranked number 29 in the NFL against the pass. So fourth from the bottom, Charles. Take those rankings, throw them right out the window. <laughs> because this is what you prepare for. This is what you practice for. This is what you think about. The ultimate test, taking on the number one overall offense in the league. That's a first down and then some. A 32-yard pickup. All right, Charles, let me put you in the head of one of those defenders out there. You have a big play like that go against you so early. What Does that shake your confidence? It shouldn't, but it often does because your thought process all during the week is how you're going to get after that offense and make your plays. And when they make one against you, it makes you a little bit hesitant. Time to regroup. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out. So this will go only as incomplete. Second and ten. Here's Purdy. Into the hands of the rookie Jordan Addison. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 19. Complete on the quick throw to Moore. And he's brought down. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. Purdy now to throw. There's Hawkinson in the end zone. 
Touchdown, Vikings. A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Looking sharp on that first drive. These guys, of course, coming off back-to-back -back victories. And you see that kind of advancing into this game, don't you? You certainly do. And when you have a team that doesn't get too full of itself, even though they've won two games in a row, you get the end result that we saw there, that nice opening drive because they're sharp, they're focused, and they're locked into everything that they're doing. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. And the Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. And if you go by the numbers, he's had a pro bowl type season, and maybe that's even selling him a little bit short. He's the NFL leader in touchdown passes to this point in the year. And with the end of the season not too far away, he's got his guys playing at a very high level. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Now a second and ten. Now it's Burrow. This one hauled in by Sample. And from the 15, they're able to work this up to the 20 for a pickup of a handful. Here is third and five. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. Work in the middle of the field. And he's got a man complete. Still going. Jamar Chase. And way in for a Cincinnati score. Jamar Chase with touchdown number 20 on the air. And the Bengals are able to strike back quickly with an opening touchdown of their own. Boy, Charles, this offense is just so explosive. They lead the league in scoring. And another example of just how good they are right there on that play. Yeah, we often overstate about how explosive teams are, but this team is truly a threat to score on every snap, especially on the first few plays of any series. And a big strike like that, that only adds to their reputation as the league's best offense. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. You talk about this Bengals defense. Right now, they're ranked number 29 in the NFL against the pass. So fourth from the bottom, Charles. And I think you're going to see some changes in the offseason, whether it's through the draft, free agency, maybe even both. They definitely need some help in the secondary. And they will finally get to him down at the Bengals, 33. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. Well, partner, that's one of the problems when you sell out to stop the run on third and short. Sometimes you break the initial wall and you go a long way. So how do you prevent it? <laughs> that's tough to do. That really is tough to do. One of the things offenses like to do nowadays in practice, you know, they do a lot of working against equal numbers. They'll start putting more and more numbers on defense and just telling the offensive guys, figure it out, learn how to block it. We may see this situation. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown. Minnesota. TJ Hawkinson with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Vikings have taken the lead. Well, CD, you know, anytime they get close to the red zone, he is such a threat. And there he is again already, his second touchdown of the ball game. And I know it's probably a little bit of a failing on my part, but you know, I watch a game through defensive eyes, and I don't understand what the coverage was doing there. When he headed out deep, they should have adjusted and flowed towards him. Instead, they left him out there and gave him a chance to make a big play. And, of course, he did exactly that. His size, speed, and versatility makes him a top target in any game. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. After that last score we just saw, now 14-7, so a chance to march down the field here, try to tie this football game. Here we go. 
Now Burrow on first down. Got a man open. It's Chase. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And Mixon going to have a Bengals first down as he'll get this up across the 30-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And that one too wide and incomplete. He had no options downfield there and just chucked it out of bounds. There was no one open. He was in the pocket. Where was the intentional grounding call? Oh, you wanted the flag. Of course I did. I'm a defensive guy. You know that. Where was the flag? The officials point out that someone was in the area. And that is caught at the 10-yard line. A big play there for Cincinnati. 59 yards. He's already got one touchdown this first half already. That very nearly was a second. Defensively, they're going to have to figure something out because he's been able to outrun the defenders early and often so far. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Touchdown, Bengals! Charlie Jones with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Bengals are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you. Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Extra point by McPherson up and good. And we are tied at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25. The Vikings head out to take over once again. And right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on both sides, moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? But hang on now. We're going to pause here. We've got an injured player. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Now a third and six. Back to throw. Purdy. Over the middle, complete. It's Moore. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Back deep for Cincinnati, the rookie, Charlie Jones. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. Here's Jones. We'll call that a 49-yard punt, but a net of just 39 following the 10-yard return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw complete there to Smith. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Here's Burrow. And that is incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. This is taken at the 23. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. 
As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with a slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. On first down, Purdy to Connor on the check down. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And that will bring up second down. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Here's second and ten. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to roll it out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle. And they work this well up field across the 45. The throw down the field. Trump is running back. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. It's another first down on what will be a gain of 21 yards. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Again, it's Burrow. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. On third down, Burrow. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. McPherson's kick is good, and they take a 17-14 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one-possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three and take some momentum into the locker room. Now on first down, it's Purdy. That is into the hands of Hawkinson downfield. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. Now that's dropped underneath to Nwongu. And he's got this down to the 35. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. 
So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will tie things at 17-all. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. Some good-looking matchups on your screen there. One of the best? Yeah, I'll say it. It's in Cleveland. A big test there for the Browns as they get set to play host to the Chicago Bears. The 4 o'clock games have some intrigue as well, especially up in Buffalo, where it'll be the Bills taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Finally, Monday Night Football, two of the most successful franchises of this new millennium. Eight Super Bowls between them, the Chiefs and Patriots from Foxborough. All right, we'll bypass the halftime show in favor of returning to this late season game with the teams coming back from the locker rooms here a bit early. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. No run back here for Jones. A touchback. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll hand it off here. This is Mixon. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. And they go play action now. Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. Mixon with a first down carry. And he'll be pretty well stopped in his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. On second down, Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. It'll go down as a gain of six. And this will wind up being a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And it'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. Purdy to throw it on first down. Completes it to Hardman. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. This is Connor running right. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. Second and nine from the 44. Second. 
Again, a run with counter. Not a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 64 yards rushing for him now, and he's only carried the ball four times. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. All start, offense. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Purdy now to throw. This pass going to be caught by Hardman. Calling a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was nowhere to go. Here he lost the football, and the Bengals grab it, and they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does, and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. This second and four. Off the play fake. Here's Burrow. Over the middle. That's caught by Chase. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That'll put him up over 160 yards receiving now for the game. They can't seem to stop it. And Boyd in motion right. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and a run up the middle with Mixon. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. And that play stopped behind the line by a corner. Trent McDuffie getting in there. We're off to the fourth quarter here in week 15. Happy holidays to all. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. 30-yard line, second and 12. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Back to Mixon on second down. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. They'd love to get a little closer if they need to kick the field goal on fourth down. From this spot, it's 46 yards. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown! Tyler Boyd, 29 yards. And the Bengals have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. How uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and they will take a seven-point lead. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. The Vikings offense making their way back out. Now let's give you a look at the playoff picture coming into the weekend of the NFC. They start the drive with Connor. And not a whole lot there. Maybe a yard to the 27. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Out of the gun, Purdy. And a 
incomplete. And he will have a Vikings first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Purdy looking to throw. Open man downfield is Hardman. He's got it. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. A quick throw there is incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Now he dumps this off over the middle. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, it's Connor. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 76 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Here's Purdy on first and ten. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. Here's second down and three. A second down throw for Purdy. Oh, and that nearly ended it. That should have been intercepted, but he cannot corral it, and that is a lifeline there with third down coming up. Purdy to throw. Reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Purdy, big fourth down play. There's Hawkinson in the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. His third touchdown of the game and fourth on the year. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the posts, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch tomorrow now this one setting up for a great finish all tied in the fourth as the kicks away and he'll be brought down shy of the 20 so the decision to bring it out of the end zone not a good one and out now here come the Bengals so both of these teams Charles coming off touchdowns now but this offense they just had to stand on the sideline watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some more upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Burrow. This defense hasn't had the best showing in this game, but a critical knockdown there. If they can hang on, I guess the end will kind of justify the mean. Certainly, and just think of it this way. It may not be the quantity of the plays that they've had because those haven't been great, but they get a few more quality ones like that. That could finish things off. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. They'll come up first and 10 here. To throw is Purdy. And he 
this throw here is going to be incomplete. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. Here's Purdy. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over in that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and ten. Throwing Purdy. And it's knocked away and incomplete. I don't know if you need the big shot right there or not, because you've still got time to work some of the shorter stuff and try to get into field goal range. They did go for the big one there. It would have been nice, but it winds up incomplete. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. To throw Burrow. Complete to Boyd. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Here's a second and seven. Burrow. Short throw to Smith. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. On third down, Mixon. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're probably about one big play from getting into field goal range. I'd go with a two-deep coverage, make sure my safeties are back to cover all of the field deep. Back to Mixon on first down. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. So four quarters wasn't enough, and we are off to overtime. Don't change that dial. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. Ken Adewagu now out of his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Well, they fought hard to reach this point, Charles, and now what an opportunity. They've got the ball first, a chance to take this overtime win away from the hostile crowd. And you know as the quarterback steps into the huddle, the first thing he's telling his team is, remember, we need six, not three. So we don't need a good drive. We need a great drive. And this is what they've been planning for. It's time to execute and take it downfield, even against all these odds. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. First throw of overtime for Purdy. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Throwing here, Purdy. Screen pass to Connor, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. On first and 10 is Connor, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. They go quickly here out to Moore. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. So a big play in this opening drive of overtime. Now looking at a third and three. Here's Purdy to throw. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage here on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. 
Well, I know you're toward the middle of the field here, but still, fourth down this distance. You got to punt it right. That's definitely the first instinct because you say, okay, let's just play some field position, make sure we don't lose the game here, turn it over in a key spot. But if you feel really good about your trigger guy, <laughs> if you feel great about him, you might want to leave the ball in his hands and let him work his magic. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 18. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Now time to see what Burrow can do here at OT. Pass complete to Higgins. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Line of scrimmage the 31 now on first and 10. Now a timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. Mixing up the middle. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. They had three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Now Burrow. He's got a man complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Just straight money right there. The biggest drive in the game, a chance to win in overtime. If they've been saving that play, they should have pulled it out at the right time. A huge turn of events there. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It'll be their second and final timeout, remember, here in overtime. We'll be back. Throwing Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. And he's in the end zone for a touchdown and a game winner in OT. So the game winning touchdown came through the air in overtime. Four quarters wasn't enough. We were treated to a really good one, Buckley Parker. That we were. And I just love being able to be witness to a game like this all the way through. Who's going to win it? Oh, what? We're getting overtime? Great for us. A lot of tension on the field. Very tough. Not a surprise it ended with a passing touchdown. That's the way we play in the NFL. But the execution was pretty darn good. So for the Bengals, they remain in the hunt for a first-round bye as they move to 11-3 on the year. And they will hit the road next.